All right, everyone, thanks for joining us. Good morning, and uh, let's get this 20-minute webinar started. For those of you that are new, this is a fast-paced overview of a problem you may have experienced in the industry and a solution that one of our manufacturers have come up with. It's only 20 minutes, so we have enough time for an overview, but then we open up the floor for any of you to jump in and ask questions to our expert presenter. This episode is called Eye Level Controls for Pump and Sewage Ejection Systems. Sump and sewage pumps are controlled with decades old technology that is inefficient, challenging to adjust, prone to failure, and simply disgusting. In this webinar, we will review the current technology that is used for these systems, the issues caused by this technology, and the solution by US Pump Corporation that will bring your systems into the 21st century and keep you clean and operational. Today we have the pleasure of having Kevin Woodworth from US Pump Corporation to give our presentation. Kevin has been with US Pump Corp for eight years, seeing it grow into the national pump systems manufacturer it is today. With no prior pump experience, he quickly moved from shop help to fabrication to engineering, and now as chief operations officer, Kevin oversees all operations for the companies. Both the field and technical knowledge he's learned over the years have allowed him to be a vital part in design and developing the new technology for the iBoost and the iLevel systems. For those of you that are new to the GoToWebinar platform, this is what your screen will look like. The two most important buttons are the question button and the handouts button. Please everyone, I'd like you to type in a question right now. I'd like to see what you're all looking to learn in this presentation. If we see some common threads, we'll address it at the end. Please go ahead and enter any questions you may have right now and we'll process those. So without further ado, let me pass this on to Kevin and he'll get the show started. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, happy to be here with uh, with Rath's, Rath Associates and, uh, and all of you. Uh, and today, basically, we're going to talk about a product um, that is going to deal with a part of the building that often gets neglected. Um, and that would be the sump and sewage pits. Uh, you know, they're usually in the corner of the building, down in the basement. Uh, no one really wants to deal with them. They're dirty, disgusting. Um, and you're, you just kind of hope that things are going right. Um, and we're going we're gonna to show you a couple ways how we can be a little bit more proactive and preventive about that. So... You know, for the last 30, 40 years, uh, when it comes to the pumping industry, a majority of the sump and sewage products that are sold are sold using floats. Uh, the floats are, you know, they, they're a tried and true uh, uh, product, but the problem is they do have their failures. Uh, they, they're not, um, they're, they're not prone to 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 malfunction, um, and, and it really is especially with today, uh, especially what's going on in and around our area um, with the, with, you know, we had Superstorm Standy a few years ago, you know, we are in an area that is prone to flooded. Uh, we wanna make sure that these, that, that, that whatever can be prevented is prevented. Now I have a couple pictures here, um, all from, you know, different areas. Uh, you can see on this one on the top left, this is kind of a weird application. Uh, this is actually from a Sandy recovery project where they're using a kind of a, a makeshift uh, basement as as a pit. Uh, you can see that there's a whole bunch of little debris. You can see pieces of wood, old pumps, um, but it's not ideal to have the floats, you know, kind of stuck in the corner and not being able to utilize the entire pit. You see down here on the bottom left, uh, once you get an accumulation of, of solids, you know, sewage and, you know, these days, um, uh, more and more people are using uh, the wet wipes, which is really changing the industry and how the manufacturers go about uh, designing their pumps. Uh, but, you know, once there's a buildup on the floats, it could uh, prevent the floats from actually engaging. So your pumps might never turn on. That sewage and that water is going to continue to to, um, to to come in, and eventually it will lead to a flood. Um, and, you know, then you have to deal with cleanup and, and maintenance and serviceability and all that. Here, um, and th these two are good examples of the, the floats not being properly installed. Um, a lot of times, you know, they kind of get thrown in. I, I kind of say it all the time. Plumbers uh, aren't electricians and elect electricians aren't plumbers and neither one of them are uh, pump people. So they don't really understand. They understand that a float goes into a pit, but it might, you know, you might have 
you know, someone on the third day of the job going down in there and, and putting the floats in. Um, and that's something that we're going to talk about because the floats get put in. You have, you know, especially, in, you know, New York City, when you're dealing with, with buildings, you know, occupancy grows gradually. Um, so, you know, what you set it up when the contractor leaves could be different from how you need to set it up when you're at full occupancy. Um, so that's something that we're going to get in and talk to. All right, so the, the old technology and what we, we refer to as the HOA panels. Uh, basically, you just have a bunch of selector sl switches, knobs, uh, maybe some, some running lights, but there really isn't a whole lot of technology behind them. A majority of them have uh, motor starters or circuit breakers, which help protect the pump in case of a clog. Uh, but as far as the, the system itself, it's not really giving you any information. It tells you, yeah, it tells you when a pump and running and maybe give you an alarm when, um, when something happens, but you, you don't know what goes on in between. Um, and, and that, you know, the limited information is really um, what, what hurts you, especially in a day and age where everyone, you know, has smartphones, has, you know, a tablet and, uh, you know, Wi-Fi enabled laptops where you can, you know, pull over to the side of the road, jump into a Starbucks, and you can you know, get the information in front of you. Uh, so the HOA panels, they're effective until they're not. Meaning, again, they work, but if you don't have any preventive maintenance, if you don't have people checking it, you don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, as I mentioned before, are the floats set correctly? Not for the demand that it's currently in, but at the peak demand. You know, When you have a 300 unit apartment building, are the floats correctly set for that particular building? Um, also, are the pumps and, and pit size sized correctly? Uh, all three of those factors go together uh, because if you, if you have a uh, larger pumps, you can, you can extend your length um, for the pumps to turn on and off. If your pumps aren't doing as much, you really need to shorten it because you don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of wiggle room to, to deal with. Um, and you know, a lot of times, it, it's hard to do a test run. All right, can you simulate 300 uh, bathrooms and showers going off at any given time with, with no one there? Sure, you can. Um, it's very rare and probably won't happen. So that's why you need to, you know, when, what we sh will show you is that that's not needed because you can adjust in real time. Uh, with the HOAs, you can only adjust after the fact. So, you know, you, opening day of a hotel, 200, you know, 200 rooms are full, seven o'clock eight o'clock, everyone's going into the shower. Um, you can only adjust until after everyone leaves, all right? So you might already had a flood or a buildup or whatever happens. Um, maybe you have a, a pump that failed. Well, typically with a HOA panel, you only have a mechanical alternator uh, and it works off of a lead and lag situation. So you have a lead pump and a lag pump, but it actually doesn't tell you if it's dealing with pump one or pump two. Um, and like I mentioned before, you do have the limited capabilities just because there's not a lot of information um, being told to you. All right, with the new technology and what we use in our eye level is a PLC and HMI screen. And you have everything that you need to know about what's going on in the pit is going to be right there in front of you. Um, you can adjust your levels in real time. Uh, like I mentioned before with the stadium, you know, if you're talking about a, uh, a baseball game, uh, you know, opening day, you, you have, uh, you know, the first inning comes and then in the middle of the inning, you, you know, that's when everyone's going to rush and go to the bathroom. Well, you don't have to wait till after the game because you, you can't close the valve to the main and then have 3000 bathrooms just not being used. So you, you can go ahead and you can say, all right, we need to spread this out. We need to, we need to, we need to allow the pumps to either turn on quicker or extend longer so that they're pumping for a longer uh, period of time. Uh, you're going to know what any problem is. Um, you know, if, if there is a problem with uh, with a pump, you, you can go to your maintenance staff, or you know, maybe you have a super or whoever it is in the building, and you can say, "Hey, go check on pump one." You know, again, being proactive, being able to um, to anticipate a problem become, before it becomes a catastrophe. Uh, we'll be able to re to control remotely, whether it be with a SCADA, a BMS system, a BAS system, uh, whatever it is, um, we can integrate to basically anything. 
and all of our control panels are completely customizable. So if you wanted to add certain features, you know, maybe you want to add a flow meter or a temp sensor or anything like that, that's something that can be added uh, pretty, uh, pretty easily. Uh, some of the functions that you'll see, and uh, you can see that we have here, we have a couple screenshots of what you'll actually see in the control panel. Uh, you can adjust uh, your levels up to 23 feet. So that means that, you know, typically in, in New York, especially with a water table, uh, the deepest that, that people tend to go is probably about 10 or 12 feet. But if you had a, you know, if you needed, uh, you know, to a 20 feet depth, it can certainly uh, handle that. You don't need to change anything. You, can, you don't have to change the transducer. We don't have to change any of the programming. It'll be able to handle it. Uh, the, uh, we still have a hand run and auto switch. So you can, you can still run the pumps manually if needed. Uh, obviously, the majority of the time you're going to be running an auto and that's going to allow uh, for the pumps to fully function. Uh, you can enable and disable pump. So if you have a, if you have a pump being serviced, it, it got, it's getting clogged or just regular uh, maintenance, you just click disable and now the system knows that that pump is no longer available. Uh, and, you know, if you have more than a two pump system, three pump, four pump, um, it's just going to go continue in sequence. So if you have pump two that's, that's out for maintenance, it's going to go, go ahead, jump over pump two and go directly to pump three. Uh, as I mentioned before, you're going to set your levels and you're going to see it right here on the screen. You're going to see an actual uh, graph of where you are in your levels and you're gonna, you have your, your stop, your lead start, your lag start, and your high alarm. Um, we also give you a starter failure notice. So that's going to tell you if a pump gets clogged, you know exactly which pump clogged. It's going to say pump one starter failure. You know that you need to have your service company or your maintenance guys look at pump one. No more guessing, no more having to, you know, run a pump, check to see if it, you know, check to see if it's, uh, if it's pumping down. If the sewage is in excess in the actual basin, you don't have to worry about getting a pumper, pumper truck because it's not a guess. You, you actually know what's going on and just say, hey, pull out pump number one and move forward. Uh, one thing that we also uh, included in our, in our Gen 2 models, which you see here, are run timers. This gives you an indication of what's going on, not only with the pump, but in the piping as well. Um, maybe you have a, a partially clogged check valve or a partially clogged the pipe, and you look at, you're looking you know, at, the, at the run timers, and you see one's at 300 hours and you see the other one's only at 180 hours. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty big difference, especially when we have the, the alternation. But that's giving you an indication that pump one is running too long, more than likely having to do with the clog in the line. Right? It's, it's not allowing the liquid to get out of the basin, so it's extending that runtime. Um, all of our control panels are password protected and we have different tiers. So if you have a, um, a maintenance staff, maybe they have full access. If you, wanna, if you have a service company, maybe you just want to give them a little bit of, of, of mobility inside the control panel. That's something that we can help set you up with. Um, and our, our transducer is going to be our primary uh, set, uh, reading, but we also have a float mode enabled as well. So if something should happen to the transducer, if the wire accidentally gets cut, if, if you know, whatever happens, you ha you're, you're not stuck in the water. You, you actually have a backup um, where you can just switch over to float mode. You don't need anyone there to, you know, keep an eye on the pit every couple hours. You can still continue as normal until you get, you know, uh, you know, a new transducer or whatever needs to be repaired and fixed. And all of our systems come with both an audible and strobe alarm. Um, so we have, we, you know, you have both. If, if it's in a far end of a building, you know, someone will hear it. If it's in a noisy room, a mechanical room, you have a boiler, you have, you know, other things running. Uh, you have the you have the um, the strobe as well, which will catch uh, people's eyes. As far as the maintenance of the actual control panel, it's a basically a zero maintenance panel. The only two things that we that we ask keep it cool and keep it clean. Um, there are um, uh, starters inside the, inside the control panel, which which run off of a temperature. So if it is excessively hot, you might get some some false readings inside the inside the motor starters it's rare but it could happen um everything with the panel is going to help you cut down on emergency calls uh because you're going to be able to know and see what is going on and actually begin to learn what is going on in your building if you have a regular maintenance staff or even if you don't have a regular maintenance staff and you just have guys coming in you know once twice 
three times a week and just coming in and checking everything is, is going well, you can keep track. Um, you can, you know, if you go to the same, the, you know, the, the, the same pit every day at the same time, and you can go ahead and you can look at the screen. Okay, today I'm at level 20. Uh, tomorrow I'm at 21. The next day I'm at 23. You know, and, you know, you're you're relatively close to where to where um, the rest are. But all of a sudden, you start going and you start creeping. All right, and now I'm at 35. All right, you know, now I'm at 42. Um, you know, maybe that's an in inclination that yes, the building is becoming more occupied or you're having more usage. And then you can go ahead and again be proactive. You can extend those levels. You can you can spread them out a little bit further, and uh, and uh, you know not have to worry about it. You, you know your your system's going to uh, you're going to adjust the system as your building adjusts. Um, so a bad float versus a bad transducer. You never really know if a float is bad until you have a failure. So if your lead float goes bad, and uh, you you really won't know about it because the pump will just, it won't kick on. It'll go on to the lag pump and just continue until you get that high usage, especially if you're talking about a storm application, you know, and it's it's August here and we get these, um, you know, these downpours and you really need that second pump and now you don't have it. So uh, you don't know what's going on unless you actually go in and test. But with a bad transducer, you will know what's going on because if the transducer goes bad, you're not going to get a reading or you'll either get a false reading uh, either too high or too low or won't get any reading at all, but it's still going to give you an, an indication that something needs to be done. Um, and with the bad transducer, you know, you don't need the manpower to have to open and close just to check something out. You might have to, you know, need them to open and close to replace it, but, you know, at least you know what you're doing. You're not wasting time. You're not wasting hours uh, doing so. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, if you have a scatter or BMS enabled, uh, this allows you to know uh, that it's just a, that's just an issue, just a problem, and not a disaster. Right? If you're if you're talking about an, an office building that maybe someone is, um, you know, no one's there over the weekend, and all of a sudden you get an alarm, you know, three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, it's not, you know, put the phone down, you know, get in your car and go check it out. It's all right, you know, we have an issue. You know, let's wait till the morning because you know what's going on. You know, maybe the high alarm goes off, but it's set at a certain level where you know, all right, you know, I have. We have some time, you know, there shouldn't be too much usage. We can get there tomorrow. We can get there, you know, the following Monday, whatever, uh, whatever it may be. But you know exactly what's going on. It's not just dealing with a dry contact and it's giving you alarm and it's anyone's guess what's going on. You know exactly what um, what is there because you see exactly what the screen is showing you if you're if you're running on a BMS system. Uh, just quickly to go over the design of the control panel. Uh, we have a very clean layout. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, the way they do things, it's a lot of wires. Um, you know, we call, you know, it's just you open it up and it just looks like a bird's nest. If you have a short, it's a lot of wires to trace back and forth. Uh, we don't have too many wires. Um, we have um, we have our, our starters over here. You have your PLC and then you have your terminals, but there really is not a whole heck of a wire, wires going on. All of our components are uh, name brands that you know. We'll get into that in just a bit. Uh, our control panels are UL 508 certified. Uh, they're easy to use and understand. It really doesn't take uh, a whole lot of training to understand it. It's, you know, if, you've, if you work the smartphone, you can work our control panel. It's just a matter of understanding, you know, what does what. Uh, we always use the latest technology and even with our, uh, with our uh, different generations, we can go ahead, if you have an older panel and all of a sudden we, we go and add something, you can act, we can actually go there, re-upload the program and you can have the, the, the newest uh, update, you know, just like you would with your smartphone. So um, any, anything that, that we come up with, we offer it back to you. And typically uh, there's no changes in components. Maybe if you, you, know, you wanted to add something, a flow meter, we might have to add in another terminal, but it's all stuff that can be done. And, the the panels look and work the same no matter on the size all right whether it's a one horsepower or a 100 horsepower if you look at the if you look at the panel you're going to know exactly what you're looking at the only thing that really is going to change is the starter vfd soft start whatever is actually controlling the pumps here's a general layout uh, our panel is broken up basically into two sides so on our right side we have all of our high voltage 
This is typically going to be your three phase, 230, 460. Um, and then we have our, a circuit breaker here that controls everything for our low voltage. Uh, our power supply will convert it from uh, the 120 or 230 volt av available. And then our PLC and our HMI all run on 24 volt. Our floats will also run on 24 volt along with our transducer. Um, this enables you to actually work on the control panel. And if you needed to adjust, if you need to change some things out, you can work on it with the power still running. It's, you don't have to constantly keep going back and forth as most as other panels typically run 120, you know, really not something you want to be doing live. Um, and you can see that our audio visual alarm is right here in the center. So you can see it by looking at it. Um, you'll see the actual strobe. Uh, and as far as our components, these three components make up about 90 to 95% of our control panel. Uh, Siemens we use exclusively for our PLC, our HMI, our power supply, and our disconnect handle. Uh, the, um, we also use them a lot for the motor starters. ABB we use for terminals, motor starters. Uh, they also make a great soft start, and we use them exclusively for any of our VFDs, whether it be for an I-level system uh, or an IBU system. And then we use Saginaw controls um, uh, enclosures. Uh, so our standard enclosure is a NEMA 412, which is a steel epoxy painted enclosure. Uh, we do have NEMA 4X stainless steel, 3R, um, you know, they, they make everything. So if you do have, a, you know, a custom application, if you need to put this outside, we can add in um, weatherproof um, screens for the HMI. So it can actually be out in the elements. We can add air conditioners. We can add heaters. Um, doesn't matter. Um, you know, we can basically do anything that is needed. And then the engineering advantage that, that we have, uh, we can own and customize the specification. If you have, um, you know, if you wanted to throw VFDs on it, we, we've done it a few times, especially down by the Rockaways when you're dealing with a water table where, you know, you have different, you, you, you still have groundwater coming in, but because of the tide, you have a, you have a, a low level, you have a high level. Um, so we actually have used uh, a bunch of VFD systems over there to be able to control it because the pump is oversized for the high tide, but you don't always need that pump running at 100% even when it's low tide. Um, and this is what I was mentioned before with the custom, you know, your flow meters, actuating valves, run timers, amperage monitoring, whatever is needed, we can incorporate. Uh, and the panel just gives you kind of that wow factor. If you're walking around a mechanical room and it's in the basement and, you know, it's older building and, and it's dark and it's and everything, and all of a sudden you see a, you know, a screen glowing in there, you know, what is it, what's going on? And again, it gives you that, that visualization. So if your maintenance guys are walking by, they know, um, you know, exactly what's going on. They can pick up a habit of the building um, and then you know, also say, all right, well, you know, that level's a little bit high, what's going on? Um, or just take a quick look at the run timers and, you know, there's a big difference in run timers. Let's take a look at that pump. Um, basically, we're just, we're just bringing the mechanicals into the 21st century. Uh, you know, like I said, everyone's using a smartphone. Everyone's familiar with this. More and more people are going to uh, BMS and BNS systems in their buildings. We have the new integration of smart cities. Um, and this is all going to, you know, come out, uh, you know, eventually we're, well, you know, one of the, you know, at the forefront, one of the leaders in this industry in doing this, um, because this is really only being done on, a, on the municipal level. Um, you know, for large municipalities who are doing their wastewater treatment plants, not a lot of people are bringing this into uh, a commercial residential building. Um, but we are, it is going to be extremely beneficial um, to, to not only the building, to not only the pumps, to the maintenance, to the servicing. It's going to help everyone um, and then, you know, sleep a little bit better at night and knowing that you have a way to prevent an, an issue. And then, uh, yeah, again, at this time, you know, if anyone has any questions, be more than happy to, to answer. Kevin, thank you. A great presentation. Um, of course, we're going to open it up to the Q&A. I just want to put up a poll. We here at Rath Associates have try been trying to do our part to help out with the COVID situation. So we've donated about $3,000 already, and we're going to donate another 500 today. We just need to get everybody's help with uh, choosing a charity to donate to. So I'm gonna put up a quick poll for about 60 to 90 seconds if everybody could cast their vote 
and we can select to uh, you know who to make that donation to. So I'm going to put up that poll now. Like I said, if everybody doesn't mind, please throwing us a vote, and then we'll share the results with you and make our donation to do our part. Great, looks like the votes are rolling in. So I'm just going to take this quick opportunity to remind everybody that we here at Wrath are not just boilers and pumps, we are also storage tanks, control systems, flue piping, thermostats. We can basically assist you with all of your needs in and out of the building. So if you have any questions as far as that goes, you can also contact our commercial sales team. You can shoot us an email at support at rathasos.com and one of our commercial team members will get back to you very quickly. All right, let's see how we're doing in this poll here. All right, looks like most of you guys are almost voted. We'll give it another 10 seconds and we'll close the poll out. We'll show the results. Hey, Bruce, it's Greg here. Can you hear me? Hey, Greg. All right, yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to chime in also. So you mentioned, obviously, that um, this charity, this this uh, donation that we're doing is uh, for this COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the lines that we've mentioned uh, a whole bunch and uh, we even did a couple of presentations on, I just want to remind people, it's called BPE, that's Building Performance Equipment. Um, this line is a really, really exciting new line. It's our first step into the HVAC market. And it's a real opportunity for you guys to, to provide equipment that is actually helpful against this pandemic. Right, so the whole general concept here as an energy recovery ventilator is that we are replacing stale and contaminated indoor uh, air with fresh outdoor air. Uh, so it's a great line. It is uh, the most efficient one on the market because it's essentially five ERVs in one. So if anyone has any questions on that, again, just reach out to us at support at rathosos.com. That was just the last little plug I want to throw in there for that. So why don't you go ahead and take it away. No problem. I closed out the polls. Everyone can see the COVID emergency relief fund has run away with the, the vote. So we at Wrath will gladly make our $500 donation to this and take that and move on to the next. All right. So let's open up to the Q&A session here. Guys, if you have any questions, please don't be shy. Let's, let's you know, Give Kevin everything we got here while we have the expert on hand and, and really start to ask these questions. So we'll jump right into it. Um, Kevin, here's a question for you. Can this system be integrated with existing BMS, BAS systems? Yes, uh, we can We can integrate with, with, with whatever you have now. We can also integrate something later. Um, you know, maybe you get the system now, but two years, three years from now, we can we can go ahead and, as I mentioned before, because we, we run on the the PLC platform, um, it's just a matter of uploading the, the programming. You know, every BMS, BAS system is different. Uh, we just need to know what you're working with, but yeah, everything can be done either prior to what you have now or after the fact that you wanna add it. Great, uh, next question for you is, can we work this with more than two pumps? Yes, it, uh, the actual number of pumps is as many as you can come up with. Um, you know, obviously the, the sequencing really just doesn't change. You're just adding more pumps. So, you know, typically two, three pumps are, are, are the norm. Uh, we have done five pump, uh, systems. Um, so yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really matter how many pumps you come up with. Great. Thank you. Jump right into the next one. Can you monitor remotely? Uh, yes, so we have uh, US Pump Corp has our own actual SCADA system. So we actually run that through a Verizon modem um, where you can uh, you'll you'll get actual feedback and you'll you, you'll, you'll get the text message alerts and the emails and everything like that. You can also make any changes from you know a laptop or phone um, as well as uh, monitoring strictly through um, a BMS and BAS system that you may have. Okay, great. Good to know. Um, any other applications you could think of for the eye level other than sump and sewage? So we also use this same technology for our roof tank systems. Obviously in, in New York, one of the, the real last areas that are continuing to use uh, roof tanks, we do it the opposite. Instead of evacuating a pit like we are with the sump and sewage, we're actually filling. So we use the same transducer, same, same technology, except we're using it where, uh, with a, you know, a booster system. And it's basically taking the water from from the city main, 
posting it up, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 stories, whatever it may be. Uh, but still the same concept where we're, we have our levels, hey, pump one kick on, pump two kick on. The only difference is you have a fifth level because you have a low alarm and you have a high alarm. So you have five levels as opposed to the four. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Here's a, here's a great question that came in from the web. Do you have a sump pump for a car stack system pit? A car stack? Uh, not familiar. I'm guessing that has to do with maybe a, a parking structure in the city where they stack multiple cars on top of each other. Maybe it's some oh, kind yeah, of yeah, oil yeah. pit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we, we do a lot, you know, especially with the oil, especially with the hydraulic elevators. Um, you know, we, so US Pump Corporate itself, we are, we're a, a manufacturer OEM. So we work with Grumpus, we work with Google, we work with Scott, we work with Weil, Velo. Uh, we work with a whole slew of brands um, who, and you know, we, we try to give you the best pump for the best application. Um, and there's really not a whole lot that we can't do uh, amongst the brands that we have. Uh, we have everything from, you know, small little half horsepower uh, submersible pumps to big, large, you know, I think, uh, I think up to 42 inch turbines. Um, so yeah, I mean, anything really that is, that is needed, uh, we can go ahead, we can assist you, uh, whether, you know, if it's outdoors, we can, we, we've done plenty of outdoor applications. We'll, you know, we've also included heat tracing. You know, if you want to put heat trace on a, on, a, on, a, on a basin to make sure it doesn't freeze, we've done it in loading docks where the ramp is, is, uh, is downward. So when it rains, it collects, collects water. Um, so, you know, we've, there's, there's really not a whole heck of a lot that we can't do because we make our controls ourselves. We're not saying, hey, this is the way it has to be done because this is the way we do it. We say, hey, what do you need? And this is how we can help you. Great. Uh, just to kind of throw on top of that, that, you know, I know that question came in. If you would like to us to take a look at anything that you're working on, again, you can always shoot an email to us at support at wrathassos.com. And we can certainly take a look at that with Kevin and try and pro provide you a solution. So, Kevin, the next question I got for you is maybe you could touch upon the ease of how easy how easy it is to program the eye level controller. Yeah, I mean, really. So the the way that the that the the program is set up is you basically all you need is the depth of your pit. So if your depth is, is you know if you're dealing with a uh, you know a four foot pit, we're dealing with 48 inches. You're going to put your 48 inches in, and the the system's actually going to automatically scale the level. So like I said before, our system is set up to do up to 23 feet, but that's gonna be rare. You're typically gonna be between the three and probably eight foot range. Um, so you just put in your inches and it's gonna automatically scale it. And then you just go ahead and you adjust your, your levels. Um, and uh, they're, they're basically preset to where they should be. Um, we never, you know, we don't, we don't run down to zero uh, because you, you, you it, it's always good to have some liquid in the, in, in, in the basin. Um, so our stop levels between be between somewhere between 10 and 20 and our, our lead pump somewhere between 40 and 50, our lag pump uh, between 60 and 80, uh, between 60 and 70, and then a high alarm somewhere above the 80% range. Um, and like I said, you know, it's not something you need to do right then and there. It's something that can be adjusted after the fact. It's not like with float levels, where you have someone you know, in the pit, literally tying them to a pipe or a float bracket or something like that, where you, know, you wanna make sure it has it done. So if, if everything is looking good for you there, and then you need to make an adjustment after, you literally just walk up to the screen, press your levels, um, press the screen, put in your new levels and you're done. It'll automatically take it. Um, and then you know, if you have to switch over to float mode, you have to do anything, it's all done on the screen, but really the only thing that you're going to be doing is adjusting your levels. Great. Uh, so I'd kind of staying on the application questions here, um, question came in, have you done installations on cooling towers? So we have done, um, use the same technology and this would go more so with the, with the tank fills that, that we that we spoke about, um, where, you know, people don't want to overfill their cooling towers. And we're using the same technology, the pump, you know, the pump sending it from the basement all the way up to the cooling tower. And it's still the same thing. So yeah, we can, we can go ahead and work this with cooling towers as well. And anywhere where you have a storage, um, uh, you know, a, a storage area, we've actually used this with, um, with suction tanks as well. Um, more people, you know, the, the old technology is just using 
a float and rod hooked up to a solenoid. When the level drops, it opens it up. The water from the, from the city main goes into the tank where we go ahead, we put in this submersible transducer and we're running off of actuating butterfly valves um, where, um, you know, if once the levels reach, you just go ahead and the, 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 the tank will fill and it'll also give you the alarms. You don't get an alarms with a, uh, with a solenoid valve. Okay, and I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay right on that topic with ca applications, Kevin. Will this work on a steam condensate tank? And do you also have an oil minder elevator? Uh, it, will it also work on an oil minder elevator pit pump? So we do. We 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 have actually just uh, just released our condensate system. Again, the same technology. We're we're still using um, the the levels, uh, and uh, we're but you know obviously we're dealing with the high temp application. And it's almost nearly identical to the eye level for, for sump and sewage. The only thing that we incorporated in there is we included the, the temperature. So you actually have a high temperature alarm where it's going to disable the pumps automatically until the, the temperature level has gone, has been brought back down. More times than not, you know, condensate pumps um, are not made to handle excessively hot water. So this will give you an indication if you have a bad steam trap um, and you're actually pulling steam back into, into, the, uh, into the tank as opposed to just water. Um, so it's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna turn off. It will reset automatically, but you'll still get an alarm and say, hey, come look at me, well, you know, something happened and you'll be able to see, all right, well, you know, this is this particular wing, let's go ahead let's take a look at the steam traps because, you know, if you're getting over, you know, 200 degree water, uh, 200, if you're getting an over 200 degree alarm, typically it's going to be steam. It's not going to be in the form of condensate. Right, absolutely. And then, and then yes, we also do carry the, uh, the oil detection systems as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, another question that came in. Guys, keep the questions coming while we got Kevin here for a little while longer. Kevin, how does the transducer work and can it work in solid sewage? Yeah, so the transducer is a... Um, basically sits on the bottom of uh, whatever the pit is, whether it be a pit in the, you know, for sump and sewage or up in a roof tank. Um, and it acts like a barometer. So it's actually reading the weight of the water um, and the solids do not affect it. Um, uh, so the one that we use for sewage actually has what we call a level guard, which basically looks like two little flanges um, with, a, with some bars around it. And it basically just keeps everything free of the diaphragm. Uh, occasionally, you know, if you get a false reading, it could be that the solids build up, especially on the bottom. Uh, if you don't have regular maintenance on your, on your, on your pit, the solids do build up and, you know, create, you know, a mud for lack of a better word. Um, but typically all you need to do is just, just clean it up, um, drop it back in and you're good to go. So yeah, the solid, solid is not, not a problem. It's, you know, something that, that it, you know, like I said before, the same technology is used in wastewater treatment plants where you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of gallons of water coming, uh, sewage coming in. Um, so it can certainly, certainly handle that. And then um, for any of our condensate or, or uh, cooling towers or roof tanks, it's the same exact transducer. It's just the level guard isn't needed because you're dealing with clean water. Okay, great. Um... I'm going to back up for a second. Maybe you could just talk for a second about what actually SCADA is, if you don't mind. Yeah, so SCADA is, is, is an individual program for the system. Um, so we actually have a SCADA platform for each of our, our, our products. So we have one for the iBoost, we have one for the iLevel tank fill, we have one for the iLevel sump and sewage, and we have one for the iLevel condensate. And it basically, it, it gives you the, the information back and forth. There are other SCADA platforms out there um, where people will basically come in and design it to your building. So, you know, this is your boiler and it's going to be identical to your boiler. Uh, this is your cooling tower. You know, these are your booster pumps and, and bringing it back that way. Uh, typically with a regular BMS, BAS system, um, you're, you're just getting a point note. So you're just getting, all right, you know, my discharge pressure is X and it's just sending a signal to and from. So whatever information you're giving it is what it's feeding it back, where a SCADA system is actually designed to you. Um, so when you, you know, when you look at our, um, our SCADA platforms, it goes hand in hand. You're going to get the same exact alarms. You're going to get the same exact, uh, we, we, we've mirrored them as best as we could. 
so you know you're familiar with what you're looking at. Um, but it's just more an individual-based uh, program for your systems. Okay, terrific. Let me see, there is a question here, uh, a couple questions in regards to the system being available as a wireless system. So uh, it is. Um, we, we, can, we, we can incorporate both a, uh, a wireless uh, feedback to Modbus and BACnet, and then uh, along with uh, our SCADA platform, it would be a, um, you can also run off of a, a wireless uh, modem. So yes, wireless is, wireless is available. Obviously with, uh, you know, you just gotta go through the IT and the, you know, the firewall issues, but uh, it is available. Okay, let's see what else we got. Um, I think we got a few questions left here, Kevin. Let me just take a look. At, I, I wanted to kind of piggyback off that with another question. Um, if not a wireless system, how do you recommend wiring? Pretty general question, so I, I you know, I'm not quite sure. I think they also asked, um, you know, how far can the panel be away from the pump station itself as well, as well. Um, so the the panel can be wherever. I mean, I, ideally, I mean, if it's something, um, you know, the biggest thing is just going to be because you have to you have to bring the pump wiring back to the control panel. Um, we can do from there if you if you needed a separate panel, we could do it two ways, where it's just a control panel, um, meaning it's just a PLC and just an HMI. Let's say you wanted to put this in a supers building. Uh, super's apartment or maintenance maintenance office, something like that. It's literally the only thing that you would have to run is a uh, Ethernet wire, and then basically anything that happens on either screen they mirror. So if you're at the pump station, you extend the level, then the other one is going to be updated as well. Middle of the night, alarm goes off. You know, super gets up, he can hit the silence alarm, go back to bed, and or go check it out, whatever he wants to do. Um, so again, we, you know, we have we have options for that as well. Um, a lot of times, you know, if it's just a matter of getting an alarm up to, let's say a front desk, uh, we actually have a general alarm built in where if any alarm goes off, we can, you know, send a signal back. It can be a buzzer. It can be a, a strobe alarm, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, at least from there, the front desk can go ahead, call them, call the maintenance staff or the, you know, service company and say, Hey, do me a favor, come take a look at this. Um, so, you know, depending on what is needed um you know we we can certainly help you uh again with the with the the sandy recovery applications um the 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 dual panel is something that we've used because the um the during sandy a lot a lot of times the the motors and every and the controls were affected by the water so even they weren't able to run even after the fact you know so the water just kind of stood there and especially when dealing with salt water, that's the worst because then it goes really goes ahead and attacks um, all the uh, you know all the metal and all the mechanicals that you have. So you know, like I said, whatever whatever is needed, we we can certainly come up and help uh, and help with the design. Which is, is great, Kevin. And you actually just kind of walked me into the next question too. Um, what are the different alarms the system can give out? Uh, you know, for example, it doesn't have an alarm on pump seizures. Uh, what else would it have? Yeah, so so the the general alarm and the strobe alarm um, that that you see on this on the screen is based is any fault that happens. So anything that goes on, it's going to tell you. Um, with the if you're if you're utilizing a, a BAS BMS system, you can kind of configure that inside your system to just say you know if if you want something someone to just know you know that a uh, a high level alarm went off or whatever you can you can distribute it differently that way but for right now in our system standard any any fault whether it's a pump failure uh whether you know if you're dealing with uh, the condensate and you're dealing with a high temperature any of those anything falls off and you're going to get your alarm you're going to get your strobe and, and um and decibel alarm so you know it tells you hey something's going on check it out Great, thanks. And it looks like we only have one or two questions left, Kevin. Uh, guys, if you have anything else that you want to get in before the end of the presentation, please send it in now. 
Um, with that, Kevin, I'll ask you one of the last that I see. Are the actual probes available and other materials of construction for specialty application? Um, for instance, electroplaters, sewage treatment plants uh, with different chemicals in the systems? Yeah, we have a, we have a, a wide variety. Uh, we can actually do high tap applications just by changing the, the jacketing of the wiring. Um, so, um, yeah, again, that's something that, that we can accommodate pretty easily. Okay, let me see, Kevin. I, I think that I'm might be it for the, you today. Well, you know, if you if you need a, a specialty pump, you know, epoxy coated stainless steel, that's some that's stuff that we we do as well. Okay, terrific, Kevin. I think that's going to be it on the Q and A portion. I don't really see much else coming in at the moment. So with that being said, I'm going to take this opportunity just to remind anybody if you have any questions or you want to get more into detail into this. You can always send us an email at support at rathasos.com. Any one of our team members will get back to you very quickly. Um, and then I do believe that will wrap up our presentation for today. Greg, anything you want to throw in before we go? That's it. I think, uh, Kevin, I really appreciate you. You did an awesome job. This is a really, really cool game changer control. Uh, and uh, I, I just can't wait to tell more people about it. So any one of you that are on here, like Bruce had said, uh, reach out to us. If you have an application or just any other kind of questions, reach out and uh, we'll reach out to you as well. And um, otherwise, uh, Kevin, any any final thoughts on your end? No, I think we're good. I appreciate the uh, allowing me to do this. And uh, like if anyone has any questions, you know, touch base with, with anyone at RATH and, you know, we have no problem doing, uh, you know, a meeting, you know, Zoom call, whatever. Um, you know, whatever, again, don't, you know, we can help you with your problem. Don't look that we, you know, that we, we're not going to be able to do it because this is the way someone else told you to do. If you have a situation, you have a, you know, a new design, you know, it's something that we can all work together to, to help you out with. Great. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate everybody for giving us your time today. Again, any questions, please get in touch with us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, you too. Take care, Kevin.